Welcome to the DLM Network Training, MOXA TCC120i RS45 Isolating Repeaters, also known as the NB Isolator. Let's begin with an overview of the TCC-120i. It's used to boost serial signal to extend transmission distance on MSTP segments or it can be used to optically isolate direct burial MSTP cable. It can be wall or DIN rail mounted as a terminal block for two or four wire RS45 applications. It has two sets of dip switches for built in 120 ohm termination. And it also requires a 12 to 48 volt DC power supply that is not included. There are generally two reasons that we would use a MOXA TCC 120-I. Let's take a look at the first application. Application number one is boosting the signal for longer MSTP segment lengths. In the image shown, I have a segment manager with available 4,000 foot of LMMSTP cable grounded at the segment manager connected to the incoming side of a MOXA TCC120i. Adding the TCC120i would give me an additional 4,000 foot of cable. Adding a second TCC120i would give me an additional 4,000 foot with a max of 12,000. So you have a maximum of 4,000 foot before and after each MOXA TCC120i have no more than two MOXs on any MSTP segment. These are Wattstopper best practices. This applies to the Segman and NB router connections and as shown below ground the shield at one location on each physical segment. Application 2 would be for isolating MSTP segments between buildings using LMMSTP-DB or direct burial cable. Example I have here have two buildings, A and B. A has a segment manager, up to 4,000 feet of MSTP cable, and an isolating repeater, while building B has an isolating repeater. We now have up to 4,000 feet of LM-MSTP-DB direct burial cable, terminated from the outgoing side of building A to the incoming side of building B. The outgoing side of building B's isolator will give you another 4,000 feet to pick up the watch stopper devices in that building. Remember that you can still have no more than 40 DLM devices or network bridges on a single segment. So you have a max of 4,000 feet before each MOXA TCC120i or after. No more than two MOXAs on any MSTP segment is allowed. If this had a third building, you would need two additional MOXAs and one additional port on the segment manager. You cannot go from building B to building C. These rules apply to Segman and NB router and as shown ground shield at one location on each physical segment. Let's take a look at the TCC120i product details. Here we have the top panel view top end view and the bottom end view. So on the bottom end view we've got a 12 to 48 volt DC power terminal block. On both top and bottom we have dip switches and we have a four wire RS45 port on both the top and the bottom end view. The LEDs are indicated with a power, indicates red when it's turned on, an orange LED that will flash when data is entering through the top end port and exiting through the bottom and a green LED that is lit when data is entering through the bottom end port and exiting through the top end port. There are four steps to install on a TCC120i. Those steps are set the terminator dip switches, connect the power supply, wire the RS45 terminal blocks, and test the connection. Step one is to set the terminator dip switches. The dip switches on the TCC120i are used to set the signal transmission mode and to enable and disable the built-in termination resistor. 
In most cases, you should not need the termination resistor, but it is available if you need it. For wattstopper applications, configure the dip switches as follows. Two-wire RS45 is the primary selection, or you can use two-wire RS45 with terminator. Please note that the TCC120i has two sets of dip switches, one on the top and one on the bottom. To ensure proper data transmission, make sure that the two sets of dip switches are configured the same. Step two is to connect the power supply. The TCC120i is powered by an external 12 to 48 volt DC power supply. It's not included, but you can use an NB switch or an NB router power supply. Once the power is connected to its power source, the power LED located on the TCC120i's top panel should be illuminated red. Note that the TCC120i provides reverse power protection. It will automatically detect which power wire is negative and which power wire is positive. Step 3 is to wire the RS45 terminal blocks. Since you configured the TCC120i to two-wire communication, please wire as follows. White positive to R positive, black negative to R negative, green reference to signal. T positive and T negative will not be used. In these examples, you should only ground each physical segment at one location. So segment manager or router to isolator, ground at the segment or router. If you're going from isolator to isolator through direct burial, Ground the leaving TCC, but not the incoming. The final step is to test the connection. Connect to the BACnet network and test the connection. Verify that all devices can be seen and that communication meets wattstopper standards. This test can easily be performed using MSTP CAP, BACBEAT, or BQT. If all devices do not report as expected, re-verify communication by separating each segment if individual segments are working properly, add termination at each TCC120i and reperform the test. In rare but some cases, the incoming port of the TCC120i should be terminated, but the outgoing port, port should not be terminated. The vendor documentation for the TCC120i states that both sets of dip switches should be set the same for proper operation, but evidence in the field has shown that different termination settings on the dip switches can improve communication on the segment. These settings may need to be field adjusted and different from project to project. The most important thing is to make sure both TCC120Is are configured the same. Thank you for viewing the MOXA TCC120I RS45 Isolating Repeaters training module.